Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 16th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the more tricky ways to do a phishing attack is instead of setting up a website and redirecting the user to the website, you are just delivering an HTML file as an email attachment and this HTML file will then implement the actual phishing page. So the user opens the attachment, the HTML will then be rendered by the user's default browser displaying some kind of login form, whatever the attacker decided to send you. And then of course the attacker has to somehow get the data that you are submitting. And there are a couple different ways of doing this. Now, of course it could be done just with a little submit in a form that then redirects to the external site or JavaScript, or like in this case, an iframe that actually includes part of the code from a remote website. So this is kind of a little bit a hybrid approach where some of the HTML is being delivered as part of the email. The rest is then included via the iframe. This gives the attacker some flexibility to, for example, redo that part of the HTML. At this point, this attack that one of our readers sent us and Rick analyzed doesn't really look all that sophisticated, a little bit clumsy as Rick describes it. But of course, the sad part is, well, sometimes the attacker learns and then these attacks are getting progressively better. And you may have noticed that today, and that's on Monday, we had some issues with cell phone connections in the US. Now, it appears that T-Mobile was the most affected network, but according to some reports, other carriers may have been affected as well. There are a lot of uh, speculations as to what may have caused this issue. At this point, there is no indication that this is actually an attack. Some people pointed to uh, the Arbor or uh, Netscout uh, DDoS map, but actually the DDoS traffic on that map isn't really all that spectacular at this point. So we are kind of left with the somewhat vague description that T-Mobile tweeted about some routing issues. Voice traffic appears to be most affected, data traffic and messaging was affected as well. And of course, one sort of notable feature that was affected for many users is two-factor authentication. If you are relying on SMS messages or phone calls, Duo Security did make a statement that they are experiencing SMS delivery issues with T-Mobile phone numbers. So we'll have to wait for T-Mobile to actually publish some kind of a post-mortem. Now, the last update I have via Twitter from them is three hours ago. So that's evening Eastern time here on Monday. And they're basically stating that at this point, data and SMS services are working and some calls are completing. Of course, some calls uh, doesn't really sound all that confident, but you could, for example, use a voice over IP service. Played a little bit around with this and uh, if you're using just uh, voice over Wi-Fi, essentially using your cell phone, phone number over Wi-Fi, uh, the result uh, was pretty much the same as using the LTE connectivity in that you didn't get a connection. And T-Mobile numbers were also not reachable from, for example, Skype. And then also remember that there are a number of other carriers uh, like Mint or Burst Mobile and the like uh, that are also using T-Mobile's network and they were affected as well. And while well, talking about issues with cellular networks, but probably unrelated to this outage, Positive Technologies has published a paper with the results from assessments they did of various telecom companies in the last couple of years. And one issue they're sort of focusing here is the 
GPRS tunneling protocol. Now, GPRS, of course, this was essentially second generation, so 2G network traffic using cell phones, but the GPRS tunneling protocol does survive and as Positive Technologies points out, also puts LTE and 5G traffic at risk. So one of these things where legacy protocols are still carrying uh, over some of the vulnerabilities from older systems. With uh, the GPRS tunneling protocol in particular, well, it's meant to allow you to sort of roam among different towers without losing your connection in particular if you're talking IP. The problem is that an attacker essentially can hijack these sessions. And if you established a GPRS tunneling protocol connection from your cell phone across the mobile operator's network, an attacker could essentially just claim, hey, I'm that phone and connect from a different tower and the network will now reconnect that connection or forward that connection to that new tower. So that's of the basic root of the problem if you our interesting detail, well, uh, take a look at positive technologies paper. And I just want to point out that uh, we had today on Monday two handler talks as part of Sans Fire. One was a Boyan's talk about uh, web vulnerabilities. And we had a second talk uh, by Xavier uh, this evening about uh, essentially sort of basic errors that he often finds in log collections and sims and how socks operate. Both talks are recorded, so if you miss them, just uh, look at the links in the show notes and uh, they'll lead you now to a recording of the talk. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.